Welcome to A Living History of Bronxville. I'm Marsha Lee. Today we have with us a volunteer in the community who probably has volunteered for as many um, different positions, she's usually chairman of whatever she does, uh, as anybody I can think of in the village. Her name is Mary Marvin. Mary, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Marcia. Let's um, begin with a little background. Now, we're going to, in the end, focus on Mary's involvement in the village. She's currently a village trustee. But I, I wanted to show you the breadth of her um, volunteer activity, so we'll cover that first. But okay. let's get a little background on you. Um, where did you grow up, Mary? Where um, I grew up in Albany, New York, and my parents are still still there. So. so. Uh, you An know? hour, two hours and 20 minutes up the road. Right up the Taconic, right, right. yeah. And then you, um, where did you get your BA? I went on from going to school, high school in Albany, uh, to Wellesley College and got a BA in history. And then immediately following college, went to the University of Pennsylvania for a law degree. So you um, both have a law degree and all this background. Um, and you were telling me, um, that um, you ha you have um, are a member of the bar in three states. Three states. Um, in What's the story? Why three states, Mary? There's a uh, good story to this. I mean, well, uh, well, let's first. I mean, who are you married to, Mary? Yeah, well, I met <laughs> I met my husband at he was at Wharton. I was this at is Brad. Roscoe this Brad. This is Brad Marvin. And he was in the Na he was ROTC and a Navy fighter pilot. So we got married and. Uh, spent our honeymoon in Pensacola for he for him to start yeah. his flight training. Wow. So every time something good happened to him career wise, he would switch aircraft and move up uh -huh. in the world of fighter planes, we would move. How was that? You so, must have been, t I would be terrified, um, especially of course right now as we face a, another war to have, to be married to somebody who's a fighter pilot. What was that like for you? Well, it was, um, it was very hard, but in some ways you look back and it was probably the best thing uh, that had happened to me. I yeah. mean, he would go away for six, seven months at a time. So oh, wow. when the, um, you know, when the bicycle box came, you had to put it together because nobody was coming home right. and you had to deal with, uh, so you know, a fixing jack of all the broken so items. So it was a good education yeah. that, I, that I needed. Right, right. So, um, but anyway, back to your, now the reason that you have three uh, that you're a member of a bar of three states. Uh, well, we would, I would uh, get a job at a law firm, and of course you can work at a firm without the bar, but you cannot represent um, in court. Right. So I would then try to study for the bar and get scheduled to take the bar, and then more often than not, I mean, the funny story, the day I found out I passed the Texas bar, uh, my husband got orders to move to Virginia. Right. It was so, a conspiracy yeah, out against yeah. you. <laughs> they so. just wanted to see how many bars you could pass. <laughs> right, right. So you, you oh. have one in Virginia. You passed Virginia the Virginia bar. Virginia and Texas and Florida. And Florida. Yeah. Good and I you. hang on to the uh, Virginia and Florida ones. Um, uh, just in case. You hang on, you have to go back and... Um, you can be a uh, non-resident inactive status oh. and then if you ever should end up moving back there, you can, um, can re-kind yeah. um, of re-up. So, now, um, you, something very interesting about your employment, uh, in addition to that, um, you have worked for Nelson Rockefeller. What's yeah. the story behind that? I mean, how uh, did you first, you, you worked, um, how I you started first in a senior in high school. Uh, yes, you were living in Albany. Second semester, living in Albany, so, right. and he was governor at the time. Right. And they actually had a. This is the 70s, late 60s and Yeah, seven, this would 70s. be 71, 72 yeah. in, in that window. And um, they actually had a work study program in the governor's office. Um, had one slot, so I applied for that, and I would go to school on Monday and Tuesday, and then work um, at the state house uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And, and this um, was when you were in high school. It was it, looking I back, mean, it was incredibly right. innovative. Do you think Bronx um, School would allow that right now? I don't uh, know. <laughs> it certainly kept me from the senior doldrums right. um, because okay. I had work for my job, and then going to school only two days a week. I also had a lot of work yeah. and. Uh, and then just what was Nelson Rockefeller like? Uh, uh, by the way, later on you had another job with him, right? right? Just by good fortune for him and for me. And because um, Brad kept moving around, right? Um, he was 
chosen to be vice president when uh, Gerald Ford became president. Right. And so, so uh, they would kind of uh, bring me along. Um, and so you worked in Washington, D.C. I worked for in Washington, D.C. for him. What did you do for him? Him um, I worked for uh, the gentleman, uh, Dick Parsons, who's actually now head of AOL Time Warner. And right. he was his legal counsel and head of what they call the domestic advisor to the vice president. So I worked on um, a lot of domestic issues and legal things. Did you, so. um, what was the vice president like? What was the, I call him the governor. Governor, He'll right. be the vice president. Oh, he, uh, uh, he, everyone loved him. I mean, he would, I just remember him in the old executive okay. office building. The door would open at lunchtime and there would be a, a car full of secretaries. So he would run in the elevator and let the door shut, and then <laughs> yelling, hi, girls. And then the Secret Service would go crazy, running down the stairs, chasing him, yeah. and so full of life. And just, um, he loved people. Yeah. And uh, just somebody that you just, he was contagious to, um, to be around, and so politically savvy, right, um, very politically and savvy. had wonderful people working for him. Actually, right. who was also, able to attract Kissinger. Right. And, exactly. Well, he was able to attract um, uh, Jay Erstad was his housing commissioner. Okay. At the time. So, um, yeah. But he played a very big role in Westchester County um, uh, politics uh, when he was governor. I know. And well, that's exciting. Yeah, it was a wonderful experience, and especially so young, and it was just a little bit of luck. Right. Well, that so. was fun. Now, I know you have two children. Two children, Aunt Caroline, who is going to turn 23 next week. Wow, where um, is Caroline these days? Caroline is out, finished college, and then finished a master's in London, and is uh, job hunting as oh. we speak. All that age is job yes, hunting right yes, now. Yeah, I was going to stay along with the rest of yeah. the 22-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Bradford is in seventh grade at the Bronxville Middle School. So I'm sure he keeps you busy, too. Yeah, he's mm. at baseball as we speak. So right. <laughs> Just in the last two days. Yes, the exactly. has broken. Exactly. Now, um, Mary, you have been involved in so many volunteer activities, um, and I just thought we'd just cover a little bit, you know, maybe just tell us a little bit about them. One of the first things you got involved in, I assume, was the Liza Frost Nursery School. You chair that, right? I chaired that. I actually did that. My Bradford went to school there, and mm -hmm. I frankly just adored I I think it's just a treasure, this village, the way it sort of lets a little child be nurtured and started. So I had an incredibly soft spot. So when he actually was uh, long out of it, they asked me to join the board kind of as an alumni parent. Right. Yeah. And I went back and just loved it and just out of a great loyalty towards it. Right. Um, I know they really do devote a lot of time oh. to that. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, knowing how to treat that age group. Exactly. Which is basically what, two? Well, he went at two and three years old. Yeah. So yeah. you're right. Just a, a lot, lot of people. Us in Bronxville yeah. start out at the. Yeah. I know I did with yeah. my kids. Yeah. So, uh, and um, of course, so the, I enjoyed the Frost. The yeah. Frost, exactly. Did so but, much. Corky and Randy. And Randy is still on the board. Is Randy still on Randy the board? Randy is still on the board. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And uh, I have down here, I'm not going to give him actually in the right sequence, but I know you were the. Um, chairman or the president of the Bronxville School Foundation. Yes, as so, you certainly know about, having right, been so, a founding member, um, yeah. I really enjoyed that. I think the foundation has, has been such uh, a benefit to the school, school. just yeah. providing some incredible extras and pilot programs that are now in the curriculum and uh, what were the major projects I know that you that were, um, uh, brought into being when you were there we were on the cusp of uh, sort of the computer computerization oh, right. in the school that, that was sort of, for um, and I was um, a little before that adding some extracurriculars um, a lot of science things, um, so it was it was time. a really um, it was really nice time. Right, right. Um, and then you've also you've done a lot in the area of education. You've been on the um, you chaired the middle school council. I did that. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was I What's did that. like to chair the middle school? school. Council? I mean, it's it uh, well, it was job. I worked with John Keogh, who actually was just. It was a joy. Um, yeah, it was when it. Caroline was there, and I used to bring, Bradford was two, and I used to bring a, um, a bag of toys, uh -huh. and he used to sit on his floor and set up trains, and John had a son 
uh, had a son the same age, so he knew. Um, he was just wonderful and accommodating, yeah. oh, and that's uh, great. and I did that ten years ago. And next year I'm going to do it again. You're going back on. When some Bradford. people just don't learn, do they? <laughs> <laughs> some people just I, are gluttons for yeah, punishment. I told the school it was like the locust, but you know right. I'm coming back. But, but ten years <laughs> ago, I mean. The middle school was brought into being how many years ago? I mean, that was early on when the middle school was. It was, though, it was, it's such, it was relatively early on, yeah. but even when I got there, it was such it was an incredibly well-oiled well machine and yeah. such a wonderful concept. I mean, I remember one of the biggest issues were uh, taking all these people from other schools on tours of this whole middle school that mm -hmm. was put together here. Well, um, in the newsletter that just came out to the community, it was stating that a lot of uh, schools that had gone to a middle school, uh, you know, format, had not been successful in bringing it about, and they were still exactly. looking at Bronxville exactly. for how to make it work. Yeah, I, you so. know, I really think it's, it's an absolute jewel. Yeah, so, uh, oh, that's good. And it's, it's very enjoyable. Yeah. Now, you're on the, uh, uh, the uh, adult school board too. Yeah, um, I'm finishing that. That'll be my, this year's the end of six years on that. Oh, wow. um, and I worked mostly on the curriculum committee. Well, um, that's the fun committee. And you mean was. selecting what programs? Right, right. Well, trying to come up with I mean, ideas and right. so it was. Uh, what are some of the best ideas that you think the school comes? Oh, school I comes. think some of their trips are incredible. I mean, what they, trips? Um, well, they did a day event, a, a tour of uh, Grand Central, taking oh, you the historic and uh, the Campbell apartment and yeah. um, just some incredibly sort of interesting things that you probably wouldn't do yourself. Yeah. Um, but they have a v still have a very large English as a second language program. Yeah, absolutely. Really absolutely. large. And, uh, and some great, uh, a nice mix of, of academic courses and uh -huh. then what you would might say hobby or sort of right. just evening. Bridge. Bridge uh, and golf. golf and oh, yeah, those kind but, of things. Um, I think that an adult would like to learn right, at French. This, uh, exactly, languages. lots of languages. Yeah, so, um, yeah. and computers. Uh, com studies. Oh, very You're many computer that. courses. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's fun. So. It must be. It's know. very. I mean, they're all so interesting, and that board in particular. I think the real benefit of any of this volunteering is you meet people that, uh, had you not been there, your paths would simply right. not have crossed. I and understand completely what you're saying. There's so many interesting people in the village. Exactly. And uh, this is the be one of the best ways to get to exactly. know Exactly. And you come yeah. home and say, what an interesting perspective. Or yeah. I simply would have never met that person had I not been involved, um, you know, in that particular event. Right. So, right. Um, that's I enjoy a, it. A one really good reason to volunteer. It is. To it is. People. Now, um, we're going to sort of move into your um, whole government experience. I mean, you were saying early on that one of the first ways you got involved in government was to serve, um, answer the mayor's call, right. uh, yeah. to serve on the uh, Retail Mix and Marketing Committee. Right. Uh, what in the world was that all about? Well, the mayor actually... Um, it was extremely proactive. She, there was a concern that, um, you know, the economy was in a little bit of a downturn. This is Nancy Hand. Nancy Hand. Yeah, okay. um, and she uh, said, she was concerned about the number of vacancies in the um, downtown yes, business. Yes, there was a period when there were a lot there, of them. Right. It's not too bad right now. No, it, it's actually yeah. very good right now. But there was that, that sort of period yeah. where it was um, a concern. So. She decided that uh, she put together a committee of residents, uh, store owners, businessmen, to really sit down, kind of figure out what the village needed, what it didn't need, yeah. and we ended up hiring um, consultants um, mm -hmm. who were incredibly helpful. Um, we actually had two or three landlords on the committee, which was probably one of the best things because well, that's smart, yeah. yeah. And this consultant unusual, it, very, but yeah. wonderful to have them, and they would channel um, good cl clients or appropriate ideas to the landlords, and so and the landlords were very receptive, receptive to it. And, I, um, I know at one point we were worried about the number of. Um, Beauty salons, the exactly. number of dry cleaners, dry cleaners yeah. nail parlors, I mean, even those, banks, even, even banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the whole thing: is helping them, kind of convincing them it's much better to have a long-term tenant than some first person who comes down the pike who can right. pay the rent. And some of them were very patient, leaving the stores um, 
Vacant. foregoing income until they found somebody that um, was well suited right. for it. Yeah. So, um, well, it, it today is one of the nicest little shopping areas, I think, in Westchester County, wouldn't you say? Oh, and, and I the... think it's it's such a treasure. I mean, we are yeah. so lucky. I mean, I always say, where can you do five or six errands in 10 or 15 minutes? Right. You just, you, you can't, can't you do You can it. walk the whole thing, You right? can, you can. Sometimes you can't park, but. <laughs> but walking's good. But walking. <laughs> and it's good for you. Right, right. <laughs> Well, after you, um, you know, served on that committee, then um, the mayor asked you to serve on the village zoning board. Zoning board. Yeah. So you, how many years were you on? I, you're, you're not on it any longer. No, I was trying to remember. I think a little over three years I was on. And what the were some board. of the major? Um, were there any major zoning issues when you came? Um, no, no, I was on the tail end of. Um, helping the plans for actually the new uh, Lutheran Church School. Oh, they, right. That was probably the largest um, project that came through while I was right. there. That had and at one point was rather controversial about that. Mm -hmm. It was. And it resolved it fairly Oh, amicably. I think it was a yeah. good, in the end, the uh, neighbors were incredibly, uh, I think they were both helpful to each other. Uh -huh. And I think it really is sort of the best of why you sometimes have these process mm -hmm. because I think the a much better result came. Right, right. Um, but um, it involves really getting on top of those zoning laws too. It, it does. and A it, law background helps. Yes, yeah. and it, it's also hard. Um, you know, you learn sometimes you have to say no and in most cases, yeah. I mean, people talk about recusing themselves, but in, in Bronxville, you it, know the faces, you right. run. So sometimes it's, it's very hard to uh, sometimes did look at people you know and just vote, no, you can't, you can't do, do that. And then so, read um, them at the right, supermarket. Right. It was a good lesson, smile, but right. it took... It, did you have very many neighbors that ever that came um, before? No, but in the course of, you know, there'd be a classmate's parent or just someone that you knew right. from. So you had to, you know, you have to sort of do the right thing. By um, the community. So, right, right, exactly. Right. And then you became a village trustee. Yes. Now you've been a village trustee for how many years now? You're uh, well, I had one election and I filled when Meg Hausberg, I actually. You took over Meg's, Meg's position, um, right. Uh, the rest of her term, which was a little over a year, and uh -huh. then ran for two years and uh, so I think I've been there almost three or four years. Three, yeah. three and a half. Three and a half. So. And I, I know each trustee usually has their purview of, of what they're responsible for. What were the, what are the things you focused on? Um, what assignments? Well, actually, I have the yeah. business district, which business I love. District, so I work yeah. with the chamber and I have the school. You go to all the chamber meetings, don't you? Um, I try to, I yeah. try to. I go, there. in fact, there was one this morning, which was a, a very nice meeting. Uh -huh. um, and then the school, right. and uh, you're the liaison to liaison the school. Liaison to the school. Well, and that's not inconsequential either. No, you wrap yeah. up the business district in the school, cool. and you've got <laughs> a large portion of the village covered. And then I have the senior citizens, so I uh, work with Kathy Studwell. Right. Um, and then I had the library board. Ah, so, so. did were you on that when the? Um, construction started to occur? I literally joined them literally when they the project was beginning. The painting had already been auctioned and um, they had made their plans and so I was here to watch it uh, just to come start and, from the beginning. So you worked with um, Eloise, Eloise Morgan, Morgan and, and Janet Lentz. That Janet was, was just going off when she the was construction the, Exactly and she had been here for all the preparation yeah. of it and then Eloise um, did an incredible job yeah. executing um, the whole thing. Yes, and incredible. It, it is incredible. Yeah. What uh, and we're volunteers. in the Jaeger room exactly. here, taping right exactly. here. Exactly, one of the nicest rooms. Uh, well, exactly. every room in the library is now sort of special. It is. Yeah. Oh, I think uh, it tells you what incredible attention to detail. And I mean, that library board worked so incredibly hard. Yeah. And but the fruits of their labor are, this are very building, apparent. You yeah. know, it's something we can all be very proud of. Exactly. Um, well, now you're going to be serving as village trustee for, a, we hope, another couple of years. And so um, do I. <laughs> what <are> you, <laughs> um, what uh, major projects do you see coming down? What are the major um, things confronting the village in the next couple uh, of years? Well, in terms of an actual project, we're starting to deal again with Kensington, the Kensington Road property. This is the property almost across from Christ Church. Christ Church, right. exactly. And um, we have. Um, all of a sudden, there has been a resurgence in um, 
developers interested and the village, we're really taking our time and um, sort of reading everything, kind of wanting to do the right thing because it's obviously, you want it to be a successful long term. Right, right. Um, and it has to uh, just fit into the flavor of the village, the neighborhood. Um, so that, in terms of real concrete projects, that's something we're that's going to do. That's, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. And, and what do you envision going there? Mainly um, a condominium? Uh, I um, think it, it, you know, certainly it's, it's just a, a guess, but many of the builders have come in and their, their research suggests empty nester kind of um, beautiful high-end apartments so that you could stay in a community like this but not live in or take care of a large house. Right, right. So um, sort of. that would be my sense of what, what will be there yeah. eventually. But what is the time frame? I mean, do you think um, uh, have, within the next year or so we'll select well, a developer? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. Then, and then it would probably be, um, they all talk in the neighborhood of, you know, 20 to 24 months of, of, um, of work. Of work, well, by that so. time, we hope the school is almost done. Exactly. I don't know how many projects <laughs> we can say. take at one time <laughs> in this village. <laughs> but um, I think the um, the overriding issue is is really uh, it sounds simplistic, but it's very hard to keep the village its character and to keep this village what it is. Uh -huh. um, and that is to uh, make sure that any new additions to houses are in keeping with the character. Um, we have to worry about our trees. We have to worry about our topography. Right. And just kind of um, because it is so unique here. And I just think um, it's just such a precious commodity that it's, I almost feel like we're the stewards and our turn to make sure that we're kind of, um, you know, being Good to the village, right? So, well, I know um, up before all of you now is this McMansion, um, and there's a moratorium on the village. There's, the village. We're currently because actually the zoning laws hadn't been um, changed, updated really, uh, to kind of just deal with the current sort of building, and so we decided it was time, uh, our duty really, to take a breather mm -hmm. in fairness and then review our zoning laws. And so we now have. Is the zoning board doing that and then they're going to report to the trustees or are you involved in that? Or? Uh, actually, it was a Trustee O'Callaghan because that was his, again, one yeah, of his he's areas. Stepping down. Oh, isn't what, he? what a wonderful trustee. He, right. And he worked with Anna Longobardo. It was a wonderful sort of collaborative planning board, zoning board, and, and Vince PC, and they met. Vince PC is just for everybody. Oh, I'm out. sorry. Yes, he's, he's, our, our, he's our village. Um, he handles all the um, buildings. Of public yes, works, yeah. and um, well, that's Peter Wood. No, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, he uh, uh, handles buildings. Right. And they worked, uh, met countless hours, really fashioning. Um, and so now it's actually before us. And it's been read, and now we're. Uh, so the final proposed um, zoning. It will be changes and additions. Actually, it, exactly are going to be coming up for a vote fairly yes. soon. Yes, next uh, uh, April fourteenth at soon. our meeting. Yeah. Well, our real goal was when we set a six-month moratorium was mm -hmm. to live by it, because it's not. It was. It's. It's a hardship to right. just I mean, sort of cease a process, and we thought it wouldn't, frankly, be fair to go over it. And the committee worked incredibly hard to. To, to make that, that happen. I mean, one home burned down uh, during this whole exactly. period. And exactly. I think you gave them a special. Yes. Um, kind of a hardship waiver. Right, waver, right, right. Um, so, to rebuild. But, um, well, thank heavens that you're getting on top of that um, because there have been some rather large homes uh, in, increased in size in the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, and I, you know, it's a small enough place that, frankly, what we each do does affect our our whole flavor, our neighborhood, our neighbor, and so right. I feel that as trustees we have to see the big picture and um, it's our duty to um, to make sure we're kind of keeping things um, going there. Yeah. Now your um, another big project is Village Hall. 
Yes. It's about time. I know. <laughs> Sorry to I say know. that. <laughs> I mean, it was like the shoe, the shoe um, makers, you know, family. They just got shortchanged. Exactly. All the time. You're right. You're right. right. And uh, no, the Village Hall is. It's. Uh, what are we gonna? What are you gonna do there? I well, mean, are uh, the plans? Uh, plans are. Uh, Peter Gisolfi is the architect. You can go see Peter the plan. Peter Gisolfi, um, who yeah. did um, the library. The library. Is and it? then the small four classroom addition at the Bronxville School. Uh -huh. So Peter has done um, a lot of work the in the village. Um, and preserved this wonderful tradition of oh, the Georgian architecture here. Exactly. What's going to be different at Village Hall and how long is this project going to co oh. go and how much is it going to cost us? Well, First, those what's going to be included? Right. We're still refining. We're at the stage of sort of uh, cost and time. It was yeah. more um, a reconfiguration. The space, as you know, was sort of very inefficient the way right. it was used, and some some very simple things. Uh, the roof is needs desperate repair. There's going to be some air conditioning now in there. Air conditioning in Village Hall. Hall. I know. This is unseemly. <laughs> but more people might come to the meetings, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and the police department needed more room. I mean, so what are you doing about that? Where? Uh, well, the basement's going to be. Uh, a lot of space is being reclaimed or changed, and it's adding, you know, incredible square footage without changing the footprint of the building of the at building. all. So, so, are the police going to have more space down in the basement? More or? space down in the basement, and, and a sort of better configuration of their department. Um, you know, sort of a real space maximization. Right. Um, and just some things that, frankly, needed updating phone systems and computer lines sort of to um, technology to meet, to meet the yeah, 2003. Yeah, I think people would be really surprised, Mary, to go over and see um, uh, how uh, shabby gentility <laughs> yes, <laughs> operates. Yes, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it really was quite, uh, yeah. quite uh, long. Um, in and it's wonderful, I mean, the employees are wonderful because many of them work literally oh, on wonderful. top of each other right and so and, uh, uh, just their desks and little exactly uh, little partitions and everything so and they work in uh, yeah an incredibly crowded um, so I think it, it'll be wonderful for everybody right. and, and that'll be needed very um, much needed and in a year or two we can christen the new I certainly hope so <laughs> that'll be well that'll be something to look forward to well um, we could go on and on forever there is a question um, I'd like to, to sort of explore with you um, sort of an ending and that is um, you know do you have any great concerns for the future of Bronxville are there any uh, what do you think is the biggest uh, challenge for the village in maintaining um, its its um, you know current ambience and its current beautiful mm -hmm. charm well uh Honestly, I think to maintain the village, to maintain the school, to maintain the downtown, it all costs money. Right. And I do have a real concern that um, we just have to somehow keep the lid on taxes to keep our residents. We have some incredibly large population of seniors, which I think makes this village really interesting and um, gives us... Um, you know, a little flavor for right. the this, this school age family and the older family and the, and my concern is that uh, somehow we have to balance keeping excellent services and a school and, uh, you know, good maintenance and infrastructure of the village, but at the same time keeping the taxes at a level that um, people can afford to stay long after they've their kids have grown. Born, grown. Now, the development, if it comes to pass on Kensington, uh, could add. It could add revenues. Revenue. Plus, we are already we have a, a a bond out on that, don't we? We have a mortgage. We do we have a mortgage that yeah. we have to pay. There's not a great deal left on the mortgage, yeah. but there certainly is a mortgage. So, okay, so that um, would have a double effect. Right. So the hope is there. it would generate income, and then, quite frankly, if we went to the empty nester housing it would not place a strain on the school right so we have to so watch that's something um, to think about too. exactly do we still have a bunch of a problem with certiorari uh, cases coming in and uh, getting reduction in their especially the business district reducing their um, or is that sort of uh, calmed down lately? Um, this used to be such a huge problem I would say it's definitely calmed down mm -hmm. but again being such a small village um, one is too many in right. terms of you know kind of having its to, impact. Its impact exactly. If um, any one 
uh, property gets reduced, it, the, the, it's borne by all the mainly homeowners. Ex exactly. The rest of the and the village, I mean, our, our village is so small that um, any change is the, the repercussions, I mean, I right. think you feel. So, um, and what about the school? I, I, I want to make any comments on, the, on that construction and that whole uh, oh, project? Oh, I just, I just think they're working so hard over there. And yeah. I mean, they've just had um, just some incredibly misfortune and, um, and people have just put their heart and soul into yeah. it. And so I'm just hoping. Um, well, it looks like you know, the bricks are going yes, up now. And, and I, I think we're yes, definitely moving along. Long, I do too, wow. I do too. Well, Mary, um, you really have uh, done as much as anybody I can think of in the whole village oh. in the way of a volunteer to um, make this community what it is. And um, so I just well, commend you for well, all the activity. And, and you do it very well and very graciously too, which is a, a real trick. Um, thank you so much for joining us to, uh -huh. today, and thank you very much for joining us too. And a special thank you to Peter North, who uh, is our cameraman, and Tom Kennedy, who edits this. Thank you, and good day. Mm -hmm.